Welcome back to another video guys, I hope everybody is having a great day. In today's video we're going to be talking about what happens to a Tesla after 100,000 miles. Now this is a question that I actually get a lot. What happens to the car after you're out of warranty, you know the bumper to bumper 50,000 mile warranty? What happens after 100,000 miles? Does anything happen to the car? Do you need to get maintenance, service? What happens? What do you need to do? Well, this video is going to explain it. I'm going to go ahead and start off with range and battery degradation because this is kind of the most important thing. What happens if you buy an electric car? What happens over 100,000 miles? Because usually people keep their cars for, you know, roughly 100,000 miles and then they'll trade it in or something. But for the Tesla, the average battery degradation and range loss over 100,000 miles was only really 8%. So I say only because think about it, it's these are quote million mile cars. So where are the batteries going to be, uh, you know, 500,000 miles down the road? Uh, you know, are we going to still be within that eight year unlimited battery drivetrain warranty or are we going to be in the new warranty with this? I think it's 150,000 miles and eight years instead of the unlimited mileage because they figured, OK, unlimited mileage, they could put a million miles on this car in eight years. Uh, unlikely, but I don't know and they can replace the battery modules that are you know going bad or whatever so you pretty much have a brand new functioning tesla if anything were to go bad on this thing so that that's what's really cool and those are for the older model x's and model s's and unfortunately the new warranty like i said is only 150,000 miles and eight years and the next topic we're going to be talking about is power loss so thankfully i'm just going to get right to the beans in this the acceleration is the same thanks to over-the-air software updates to keep the performance up to date. And I've said this in a lot of my previous videos, and I'll say it again. I think over-the-air software updates is what's going to make these cars much more desirable over the years than any other cars. Because getting over-the-air updates is like a phone, you know, you're not stuck. Like, let's just say you buy a Lexus. You're stuck with that infotainment system software for the rest of the car's life. With the Teslas, you get over-the-air updates through LTE or Wi-Fi, which provide bug fixes and everything like that. If you have bugs in your software, they get fixed over the time because they will release software patches that will fix everything. And it's it's really cool, and I think that's one of the most beneficial features of having a Tesla, is just being up-to-date with new features that they release, and they can retrofit hardware if you really desire, but I don't know. I think that's one of the best Tesla features. And the reason why there's really no acceleration loss over 100,000 miles. Now, over a million miles, I'm not sure how those motors are going to hold up but they say these are million mile cars we will really see about that i'm not going to be surprised if these can actually hit a million miles because these drivetrains are just so simple it's just battery into the motors into the wheels that's it it's just it's very simplistic and it is just downright the simplest solution for a drivetrain in a car next i'm going to talk about everybody's favorite interior quality over 100,000 miles so here's the thing whenever you get the car there are some interior problems but everything is fixed into place and it's a brand new car and there's not many rattles but whenever you go 100,000 miles there's a lot of creaks there's a lot of vibrations in the road and stuff that just make everything a little bit looser and then you get a little bit of I guess dashboard noise you get a little bit of center console noise little noises in the back sometimes if you have the base up and the subwoofer surround gets kicked around a bit and it sounds like a blown woofer but it's not it's just the surround going absolutely berserk from the vibrations and this is just kind of a little hot take on my part I've owned two Model 3s this is my second one the performance the first one actually did have a little bit of a problem with noise from outside of the car like for some reason I don't know if it was the brakes making the noise or something like I just got caught somewhere but there was this ticking noise in my previous model 3 that I just don't know where it came from could have been the motor for all I know but I had them check it out and they said it wasn't so maybe they just got out of fixing it I'm not sure but that's something to keep in mind and then there are a few people that told me that they had to get their passenger seat replaced after the controls stopped working but they were under warranty and they fixed them for no cost which was good but it just kind of makes you wonder what happened to those passenger seats that I guess just wanted to stop working. Next, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the exterior. So as most of you know, Tesla paint is very soft. And unfortunately, if you don't get the front of any Tesla clear broad, then it is going to be pretty much eaten up by stone chips. And it's just going to look kind of like you have bugs all over it. When in reality, those are just a bunch of chips in your paint because Tesla is too cheap to actually invest in some really good paint. At least it looks good for the duration of which you own it. You give it to the next guy they're probably going to have to deal with.
deal with some pretty scratched up Tesla paint, which is really difficult to fix after it's already been fixed once. And if you have to keep fixing paint, there's going to be no paint left. So uh, yeah, that's kind of something to keep in mind with that. And there was on my first Model 3, the back bumper, there was actually a little part where you could see, I don't have a video of it, unfortunately, so it's hard to prove, but take my word for it. The bumper was just a little bit faded on one side and it was a black car, so you could kind of notice. So it's unfortunate that I don't have that video, but my God, it was actually pretty noticeable. And some people actually pointed it out. They were like, hey, did you paint correct wrong? I was like, no, I didn't paint correct wrong. It was the paint. And I took it to Tesla and they were like, yeah, it's the paint. But Elon Musk did make a tweet acknowledging the paint problems and that they were going to be really cracking down on their paint and sourcing it from, I guess, better suppliers and just doing a better overall job painting these cars. Because back whenever they were painting these out in tents, people were getting pretty dissatisfied with their 80, 90, $100,000 Teslas that have a $2,000 paint job that is botched. And another really quick thing to mention about the front of these cars is they are just an absolute bug collector, as you can see, because there's no grill, there's nothing to go in, they can't hit the radiator or anything it just kind of hits the front of the car along with all the other rocks and stuff if you don't protect it next up let's go ahead and talk about maintenance and repairs starting with brakes so i'm just going to be right up front with you guys 90 percent life after 100,000 miles with spirited driving for the model 3 now for the model s and the model x because they are way bigger the model s weighs like almost over 5,000 pounds and i think the model x weighs like 5,700 pounds or something 85 percent on those brakes and they are all brembo brakes so Pretty damn good, but the reason you don't have to pay for brakes is because they don't fade because you don't have to use them because it has regenerative braking. All Teslas do. It's one of the coolest things, actually. It saves on a wear item, which is tremendous. It also, you don't have to pay for gas or anything, no oil, which ties into maintenance. It's pretty interesting that these brakes last so long, especially on a performance car. Like the Model 3 Performance expected to have like maybe 85 to 90% on the brakes just because I am a spirit driver. I do drive hard. I do use the regenerative braking. However, I do sometimes have to dig into the brake pedal and use the brakes. So that's just a little bit of a wear and tear item. Along with, you know, wiper blades, probably go to about two or four sets of wiper blades for your car, depending on where you live, like climate, what the weather's like, and I guess just conditions. Next would be repairs. So I've heard from multiple Tesla owners for some reason, I don't know if this was just a common issue, upper control arm replacement on the passenger side and also the driver's side in the front. So I have no idea what the hell happened there, but they got them all replaced. It was still in warranty, thankfully. The seat got replaced in another person's car, but those are the only main issues that I've been hearing. No, I guess, major battery flaws or anything, and if there are, they're covered by a crazy warranty. So next, we're going to go ahead and get into tires, because this is a pretty painful topic. It takes about three to five sets to hit 100,000 miles in a Tesla if you are a spirited driver such as myself. And going along with tires, you have to get your wheels aligned every once in a while, so probably two or three alignments within 100,000 miles just to keep, you know, erring on the side of caution. And another thing you should probably take into consideration here is the interior. So the interior screen, that is a very expensive piece of tech right there. And if it breaks, it's probably going to cost you about $2,500 for a Model S or Model X screen replacement and probably $1,500 to $2,000 for the Model 3 screen replacement. So definitely not cheap. So all Tesla owners out there watching this, please take care of your screens. And any future Tesla owners, please take care of your screens because my gosh, that is really expensive to replace if you happen to have a little mishap because if they find out that it was an accident and that it was your fault they are not going to cover it so yeah customer service for the win okay so next we're gonna get into should you buy a tesla or should you avoid a tesla so that depends on what kind of person you are. Are you a person that lives near a supercharger? Are you a person that lives near a charger? Are you a person that likes to drive electric cars, that like to drive cars with instantaneous throttle response and self-driving technologies and advanced safety capabilities and just so much stuff packed into it? Yes, you should probably buy one if you are a tech nerd like me and you just absolutely love advancements in technology over the years and, you know, incremental advances and then, of course, someone like, you know, Elon Musk coming in and creating a Tesla and just absolutely revolutionizing the car industry because, I mean, think about it, everyone's trying to switch over to electric and they are just having a very tough time and Motor Trend's car of the year last year, EV of the year, was the Mustang Mach-E, and I'm not here to knock on them at all. It was a fine decision, but they don't have a charging infrastructure. They don't have the power. They don't have the performance. They don't have the fun factor. They don't have the cool factor. They're just not there yet. It, I mean, it's a great first start. You know, it's a great start. However, I think Ford is 
pretty behind. And I think Tesla's competitors are also very behind because no one has caught up to them. And the only cars that you really hear about are like Remac and the other crazy cars that are hyper cars that cost over a million dollars, if not over two million dollars, compared to the Plaid Model S. But that's a family sedan, so you can just kind of buy that with 1100 horsepower or 1020 horsepower, whatever it has. It's, it's a crazy amount of power, but I, I just think that if you're into fun driving and just cool pieces of technology that are just kind of toys for adults, then yes, go ahead and buy a Tesla because this thing has just about every feature you would want. It's really cool. So yeah, bottom line, buy a Tesla, and if you can't afford one yet, just wait for the Model 2, which is coming out in probably the next two years or whatever, which is going to be $25,000 starting. And just like that, this video is over. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys have any questions, any at all, please feel free to comment them down in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.